The Russian invasion is likely entering its culminating phase. The occupiers have intensified their attacks on the Donetsk region. From the north, they continue to advance on Bakhmut, and from the south, they have launched an offensive on Vuhledar. The Ukrainian authorities declare that a new stage of the war and the fiercest confrontations between the Russian and Ukrainian armies will begin in the upcoming weeks. And the media are reporting that by February 24th, the anniversary of Russia's invasion to Ukraine, the invaders will try to completely seize Donetsk and Luhansk regions. From a bird's eye view, the city of Vuhledar looks like a conflagration. In recent days, it has been one of the hottest spots in the south of Donetsk region. Vuhledar provides top view. If they capture it, we will find ourselves in a tough position and will have to reorganize entire line of defense. It is constant shelling. You can hear it yourself. They constantly use artillery fire and aviation. The Russian army can achieve local successes in this area. But it does not have enough forces and resources to make an important operational breakthrough, the UK intelligence believes. Meanwhile, the American Institute for the Study of War reports an escalation of the situation in the north of Donetsk region, near Bakhmut. In addition to the Wagner Group, regular Russian troops joined the attacks on the city. The Ukrainian military confirmed that enemy artillery had established fire control over several routes to the city, but denied that the occupiers had taken Bakhmut into an operational encirclement, as reported by Russian propaganda. Close combat continues on the outskirts of the city. Two to three weeks, the Russian may launch a new offensive against Ukraine. National Security and Defense Council Secretary Oleksiy Danilov told Sky News. They can attack from the north, east and south, he said. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky has also emphasized a possible offensive in these areas. According to the American Institute for the Study of War, in the coming months Russia is likely to launch a large-scale offensive in Luhansk region and in Donetsk region, it will use defensive and defensive tactics, as well as continue to prepare for an attack from Belarus, which is possible no earlier than in autumn. Meanwhile, some Ukrainian military experts believe that a new phase of the Russian offensive is already underway, having begun with attacks on Solidar and Vuhledar. Ukraine is also expected to launch a counteroffensive soon. So far, the 100,000 Russians mobilized in February are not yet in Ukraine, though they are ready to go. Actually, they are already coming in, but there is a constant movement which will last until about the end of the month. The whole hundred will have entered by the end of the month, so we need at least to try to do some things by the time. I think that during February, as soon as the equipment provided by our partners arrives, our troops will start moving either towards the Azov coast or directly into Crimea. Crimea towards Armyansk. At the same time, the expert believes that if a sufficient number of light armored vehicles and Soviet tanks, which are already being supplied by Western partners, arrive in Ukraine, the offensive can be launched without waiting for heavy armored vehicles to arrive in the spring. We are talking in particular about Leopard 2 tanks, which Germany, after a long debate, allowed to be sent to Ukraine. And we have already been promised tanks from Poland, Finland, Germany itself, the Netherlands, Spain, Norway, Portugal and Canada. On top of that, the US has announced the transfer of its M1 Abrams heavy tanks. It's a big psychological factor, because we are all human. But when the team is trained according to the NATO standards, they know that they have a 98% survival rate in combat, even in close combat. It's a lot. We will go further. First of all, we are all interested in protection. When you are working under fire and you have time to work, not to run away from being covered by fire. And these machines provide active and passive protection. 
When we talk about conducting offensive operations on land, long-range artillery must work actively in front of the tanks to destroy the enemy's command post, warehouses and personnel, and then tanks go into battle. We understand that the front is wide and we need equipment. Europeans and Americans are aware of this, and now their defense industry is trying to go on, war footing and help us as much as possible. If we are not given attackums now, it doesn't mean that we will not receive aircrafts with long-range cruise missiles that can perform the same functions on the battlefield as attackums. Russia currently has a significant advantage in aviation. Western countries are in no hurry to send us military aircrafts in the near future. In particular, US President Joe Biden has said that America is not to provide Ukraine with F-16 fighters. However, several countries are considering sending Soviet MiG-29s, which are somewhat outdated but well known to Ukrainian military pilots, while it takes them about six months to master the American planes. The media reported last summer that the US House of Representatives had approved funding for training Ukrainian pilots on American fighter jets. They allegedly allocated $100 million for this purpose. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share and subscribe. Any questions, proposals and comments, contact us via email.